Call to order meeting of Planning Zoning Commission for the City of Apache Junction. Today, it's on. today July 12th, 2020, 7 p.m. I invite you to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. Roll call, Rudy. Commissioner Barker. Here. Commissioner Begaman. Here. Commissioner Cantwell. Here. Chairman Hanchi. Here. Commissioner Cross. Here. Commissioner Gage. Here. All present, we have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Rudy. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's see. Um, I have uh, consideration and approval of the agenda and approval of the minutes from April 26. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, uh, I move approval of tonight's agenda and approval of the minutes of April 26, 2022. Second. I have a motion and I have a second. Uh, do I have a, can I have a roll call? Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Barker? Yes. Commissioner Begaman? Yes. Commissioner Cantwell? Yes. Chairman Hanchi? Yes. Commissioner Cross? Yes. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Rudy. Um, tonight we have one, one, one hearing on the public meeting. Uh, that is presentation, discussion, consideration of case P-22-55 CUP, a, pr a proposed conditional use permit amendment to modify the conditions of approval for resolution P-21-61 CUP in order to adopt a new site plan and site configuration and adjust the language of the requirements as relevant to draw a new driveway location and lot configuration. Good evening, Planning and Zoning Commission. It's good to see you all again. Thank you. It's been just a bit, but we have a lot coming down the pipeline, so we will have even more meetings in just a bit. I'm sure. So I was just kind of explained. I'm here tonight to talk about P2255 CUP. So this case is a request to amend the resolution P2161 CUP, which was a conditional use permit approved last August uh, 2021, which approved uh, the, and authorized the use of a, an event and wedding venue on this parcel, uh, the northern parcel in this two-parcel two section. It's 103 210090. So at that time, uh, as I'll show you in the site plan, there was going to be access off of the 18th Avenue alignment and it was going to come, kind of come down and we had the, the configuration set up. And at that time, there was uh, the nine conditions of approval that were involved at that time. So since that time, the applicant has been working on the architecture and on the site ZAN pr prior to construction submittal, working on all the, the development conditions that are involved in developing the site itself. This is the plan that I just mentioned. Uh, if you just kind of change the configuration, north is on the right. So originally the plan was that there was going to be a wash crossing right here. Uh, and it was going to go along the federal patented easement that is the 18th Avenue alignment so this was going to be a dedicated street, and then it was going to turn in here. And along the way, the applicant had, had come to discover some different cost and complexity issues about putting the wash crossing there and the difficulties <laughs> of developing the site in that way. So the site plan has been modified since then in order to, to utilize the parcel immediately adjacent to the south and to move the the driveway as well as the street access to the southern parcel. 
which would be parcel 103-21-0200. So with this, we're working with the applicant in order to, to figure out these different access issues and the different items. And so in consideration of this, we, we worked for on a, a new site plan, which in this case uses the second parcel. There would be signage along the street along South Star Road and with this driveway here. The applicant provided full reasoning for why all these changes were made within the narrative, and staff is supportive of the change. But as we were working on this, it, it came to our attention that changing the configuration in this way would lead to the, the unfulfillment of about three or four of the conditions of the original conditional use permit, which would require, in this case, an amendment so, so that we can rectify the, the uh, I guess, just the, the loss of the legal obligation that was originally arranged. So with this, uh, the applicant has requested, uh, uh, for formally requested the amendment so that we can, we can just address and, and clarify these small items. So in review of the newly proposed plans, resolution P2255CUP has modified the conditions of approval of the original conditional use permit in order to, to exchange the relevant language such as which improvements needed where, where the driveway is going, and what site plan is adopted so that everything meets the newly agreed on or, or newly proposed site plan. This, this language just replaces things like the parcels involved as well as the location of these improvements. <laughs> of note, there is the, uh, the original plan had on the north side the driveway proposed as well as things like landscape improvements. Condition 5 was one of those conditions that said that there would be this, the 10 foot landscape strip required by the zoning ordinance was going to be right there along that. And as an example, as it is currently proposed with the landscape, with the driveway and access now entering onto STAR, condition 5 has been reworded so that the landscaping would be along STAR instead. And I bring that one up specifically because the applicant has requested uh, if that condition five could be removed from the proposal altogether. He has asked that this section of the zoning ordinance requirement could go unfulfilled if possible. He has a further, further explanation for why he's making that request. As it is one of the standard zoning ordinance requests to, to have the, this landscaping along any kind of commercial street frontage, Staff proposes to, to leave those conditions in so that P2255 CP would be approved as recommended currently in the staff report. The applicant has gone through all the standard public notification processes required of this amendment. In this case, we have spoken to the neighbors. No one has any concerns about, about this amendment or even the use itself. There's just questions about what was being changed and so forth. The changes themselves are relatively minor. We're just going through these legal procedures in order to make the changes as required. So all of the conditions of the original resolution P2161 CUP have been re-included and updated as affected by the proposed changes with the site plan and the lot configuration. Uh, they've been re-included so that this new conditional use permit would essentially be the new document altogether. So that way you don't have one document that has half of the conditions, half of them being obsolete, half of them being still in place. This one just has all of the conditions that were carried over and the ones that were modified. So that way staff recommends, can recommend the, the complete approval of P2255CP subject to the conditions of approval found in the staff report. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Yeah, can you restate what you were meaning with condition five? Yes. You kind of lost me on that. You were I apologize. One, yeah, that's yeah. fine. I, I practiced this in advance and yeah, I just ended up tripping over a couple of my words. So yeah. the original condition five required that there would be a 10, so it was a restatement of the, the landscape code itself right. just within the general zoning, zoning ordinance regulations. However, it specified because there was, there was a question of where is the actual street frontage. Mm -hmm. So the original condition five specified, well, the street frontage is going to be 18th Avenue, yet to be dedicated, but that's where it's going to be a 10 foot landscape strip there. The modified condition five changes the landscape location to along Star Road. The same kind of 10 foot landscape strip typically required of the zoning ordinance. The applicant has requested due to the location and, and where it is on the site, 
if that could be foregone. It is a zoning ordinance requirement, so it would leave it unfulfilled, but that, that is part of the request that he has made to staff and was mentioned as we worked with him through the staff report. So that, that is why there is those two items to note. And staff wants it or does not? Want? Staff does want it. It is, it is one of the normal right. zoning ordinance requirements that along any commercial street frontage, there would be a 10-foot landscaping strip. Okay. So in this case, condition five is only included as a specification of where it is. Okay as opposed to whether or not the, the requirement itself exists. But just for clarification, the applicant has asked if that requirement could be foregone or unfulfilled as it is. That's where you kind of lost me. As right, I, I understand, yeah. yeah. Chair? Yes, Commissioner Kentler. Okay, um, in the original proposal, the uh, applicant owned both parcels? That is correct. Okay, but so the second parcel was not included in the original proposal. Okay. That's kind of what I was remembering. Um, this entrance kind of confuses me. Okay. I would think that since they own both parcels, wouldn't it be a whole lot easier to bring the entrance over west of the wash? and come straight up. Now, I realize that's fairly close to the church parking lot, but if you came across the wash and then came straight up off of Old West, that would be a whole lot more convenient. Because coming in off of Star Road, I think people are going to get lost and confused. We have recommended a few different site designs. This is ultimately what the applicant has decided on. Okay. If, if you would like him to answer the questions, uh, he does have a little bit of a, a presentation prepared. Um, but but we, we're aware of that, and we, we've recommended a few different site configurations as these difficulties have been brought to our attention along the way with the different site planning and engineering. Um, while I agree that that one may be one of the available options, this specifically is what the applicant has decided upon with his engineers. Okay. So I believe he may be more fit to answer that question specifically. Yeah, I'm just a little bit leery of bridges over washes. Okay, understandable. Since they can become troubled waters. <laughs> yeah, I'm old enough for the pun, excuse me. <laughs> he doesn't get it. <laughs> yeah, I know, it was bad. <laughs> Anyone else? I'd like to hear from the yeah, uh, applicant. Yeah, from the Anyone applicant. else between? Yeah. All right, can we hear from the applicant then? Thank you. Thank you. So the map would be on Google Chrome, and these five are, your, are the pictures you sent me. Over. Got it. Like a bridge over troubled waters on here as well. <laughs> and I'm not that old, but I got it. Um, that way. Answering, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> To answer the first question. Please state your name. And oh, yeah. Uh, Mark Russell Givens. I go by Russell, my middle name, uh, and owner of the two parcels in question today. Uh, I love the idea, but we were told we couldn't do it. Um, to come off of Old West Highway, there needs to be a minimum required by the state. I think it was 75-foot deceleration turn lane, and the church has the minimum 75 feet already there, and to go any further back, there is a bridge culvert wash on the highway, so there's nowhere to widen the lane there. So they, so that's not, they said it's not physically an option, which I wanted it to be, but they told us we couldn't do it. That makes sense. If you got, yeah, if you got to put a bridge in, I just, you know, putting right. it on the road would be Yeah, we'd have to knock off the wall of the but bridge. But it is state property, so yes. Right, uh, so they told us, you're gonna be turning on Star, then from there, it's out of our hands, talk okay. with the city. Uh, Okay, so condition five is what I am um, here to talk about. And let's see if I can pull up the right, the correct one. I believe this is it. Yep, this is it. Um, so I have just four basic points to make. Uh, and it shouldn't be too long, and some of them may be more relevant than others. Uh, the first point to make is that uh, just to establish precedence, uh, a little intimidated by our attorney on the right, but he's, just a, he's a nice guy, so it <laughs> shouldn't be that hard. But I'm not, I don't, I don't usually make cases in front of people, but so the precedence being, we, we are making this now, the new land as um, Nick alluded to, 
having the both parcels together and then that there is you know something in place that says when the commercial property is on a, a, a road that certain improvements have to be made one of those is that a sidewalk is required uh, along the, on that road in dealing with public works uh, we did the same pitch to them saying I think a, a, a sidewalk and, and what we're looking at here by the way is this yellow highlighted strip because our land actually ends right at the southern entrance here of the church, and then it ends right at 20th. So it's, it's about a 100 foot, 120 feet strip of land here that would be ours. Uh, they got back to me and said that uh, as the frontage is currently positioned, a sidewalk would start and end without any improvements on either side. And due to that and the residential nature of the surrounding neighborhood, the sidewalk will not be required to be developed. In fact, Public Works indicated that they do not want the sidewalk there <laughs> and therefore would not require that. So even though there was something in place saying that this is a requirement, they were able to look at it from a practical standpoint and say, this is a reasonable request, we will grant that and say that it's not required to have one. So that's kind of the, the avenue we're coming at as well. So if there were to be landscaping there, uh, the and here's, I have a few images. I just lost it here, Nick. Can I just pull up this folder, I think? Yep, here we go. So here's a few images of exactly what we're talking about. Turning right off of Old West Highway, church, Baptist Church to your right. This is not our land to the left with these three about 10, 12 foot trees. The yellow highlighted portion would be the, the area that we're talking about in terms of requiring a, a 10 foot deep area of irrigation, or, um, landscaping with irrigation. So. One of them, one of our concerns, I'll actually show you a couple of images of this. Here's another view of it from the road. It would be this highlighted portion about 10 feet deep off the road. Uh, and then there's one more, or maybe there's two more. Uh, here's one looking south back toward Old West Highway, Baptist Church now on our left. Here's where our kind of driveway would be proposed to come in. Here's the highlighted strip. So one of the things is that I feel like it would probably, I could make the case that it would be out of place, meaning just starting and stopping kind of randomly in this 120 foot section and then the area around it not being developed at all or landscaped at all. Understandingly, the church is 40 years old and there's certainly grandfather rules there and I completely appreciate that. But directly across from it would have nothing. <laughs> directly to the south of it is a, I don't know who owns that land, uh, but that would be undeveloped. To the north of it is residential property. If we go back to that image, you would see that that's someone else's property over here, so that would probably remain untouched too. So it would really just be this area that would be f there, I don't think necessarily for a functional reason, uh, coming from either direction, uh, it would be there just to fulfill something that is in writing, which again, I completely understand that. But going back to the public works comment, if it's not practical or if not needed or if it's something that has a merit to not require, then that's what we're requesting. Maybe it be looked at and saying, you know, maybe that's not required you know, per se for this particular area because it maybe just be slightly out of place. I have one more shot of it here just so you can see. The other point is that there is an extreme <coughs> amount of vegetation from the road looking back. So I'm looking back at the um, uh, Mormon Latter-day Saints Church to the northwest. And you can see there is hundreds, if not more, uh, of trees, some 10, 15, 20 feet high. Uh, this would all be kind of raw, undeveloped land again, but there would be a 10-foot strip here that would be uh, just done to fulfill the requirement. Uh, third point is that we would then have to irrigate that, I guess, which would be, well, I guess, four or 500 feet of a, of a line, s supposedly. Um, here again is the, the image. Our site is gonna be developed up here with parking and all the activity on the other side of this wash. And so this one little yellow strip having to run an irrigation line and keep that alive. And I honestly don't know what the, what the process would be if a tree or two would die. Is it our responsibility to then report the dead tree? Do we replant the dead tree? Does someone call us and tell us that the shrubbery is not looking as good as it should be? Again, with the entire surrounding area being just raw desert uh, feel, which is what we love, by the way. Um, and then the fourth point, and this one, I don't think it's a stretch, but smarter people than I have told me to bring this up. Uh, as people are exiting the property, and let's say four, five, or six cars are lined up here, with nothing here, 
that gives no hindrance to the sight line of other cars coming up Star Road or leaving the other church across the street. Uh, if you put something there, depending on the size that's required, I know a few trees are required, more shrubs are required, which are probably only two or three feet high. But as trees get bigger, then you have people here trying to look through trees. Again, it's not a solid wall. I completely understand that. But nothing is safer than something in the sight line for cars trying to turn onto Star Road. Uh, again, just to, not for our intents and purposes, just to fulfill the, the requirement. So and I think those are the four main points. I don't want to bel belabor it at all, but just kind of throwing it out there and seeing if you have any, any questions for that, see if you see my point and if, if, if it's valid enough to say, can we remove that requirement because it's, the entire property is surrounded by trees and, and vegetation and it's really enclosed back here, which is great. The additional up here, I don't know, other than fulfilling the requirement, if there's a benefit to the area, to the, to the road, to Star Road, uh, things of that nature. So I guess I'll stop there and ask for questions or comments. Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Barker. I see your point. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I mean, it would be uh, 120 feet of specific box trees and shrubs that would end abruptly on both sides. Church would enjoy it. That would <laughs> add to their view. My question, though, really doesn't have anything to do with that. I, okay. <laughs> your road, is that going to be gravel, dirt, what? Uh, it's going to be a, a non-dust producing either asphalt or chip seal or something that's going to be a solid surface that doesn't produce. Gotcha. And how are you going to deal with the wash area on that road? <laughs> that, yes. The, the same. So we had, we had to deal with it either way, coming up off of the 18th Avenue right. or down closer to 20th Avenue. Um, and we have engineers smarter than I that are working on that to build a culvert of some kind that will be oh. submitted that will have a, almost like a mini bridge. Um, Culverts allow the appropriate water flow to allow for a 100-year flood water flow to come through it and then vehicles drive over. It's going to be weighted, rated and weighted for fire truck vehicles, cement trucks, dump trucks, obviously commercial, uh, residential, normal vehicles. Uh, but that is definitely something that we've been working on for months, if not longer, <laughs> and will be submitted as well. Bridge would be kind of nice if you're talking about a bridal place, you know, put ribbons and so forth. I like the right. way Commissioner Barker thinks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, that's you're absolutely right. Of, of Anything in the background for pictures is yeah. You got a venue want. there that's made for a bridge with right. a couple of trees. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of swaros or some kind, right? Something. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I have a question. Um, are you going to have signage out there by your drive to come in? Yes. And that was one of the other, that was, that was more of a minor, but it was definitely a consideration. On the strip up top, it was, I don't know if, Nick, I have access to that, but that's okay if I don't. Um, there was no room for that. And so one of the public works feedback was when people are coming up, and now they're coming up substantially into the neighborhood, there's no place for a sign, signage because it's right next to residential and right next to this federal land. And so they were predictive that many cars would pass up the entrance. Then have to go into the neighborhood, turn around, come back, find the entrance. Uh, so again, that was something we certainly considered. In this, because our, it, there's a line here that this triangle at the bottom is not our parcel. So somewhere along this strip, we would certainly have a sign uh, that tells people, turn here, our name. Uh, probably put like a swaro again, just to have the Arizona feel uh, in this area. But this gives us a lot of room to do that. Well, that's what I'm wondering if maybe with your signage you do some kind of landscaping with that. Oh, it, I can, <laughs> I can assure you my wife would require that. It wouldn't just be a sign. Right. There would be some cactus and some cool little stuff around the base of it, but yeah. not 120 feet worth right. of it, obviously. And um, then, Rudy, I'm thinking maybe we can put a condition in here. Cause I'm wondering, you know, this kind of, to do the whole 120 feet at this time, because this whole area isn't built out. But as the area develops, maybe down the road, well, we, we can have them. 
you know, maybe once sidewalk goes in? Mr. Chairman, uh, maybe now's the opportunity for a couple of corrections here. Uh, it's not 120 feet. It's 330. Okay. There was 330 feet of frontage on Star. There was 330 feet of frontage on 18th. So in the, pre in the original proposal, like with any commercial development proposal, a, a developer is expected to landscape their street frontage. Yeah. So from the edge of the right of way, you come in another 10 feet, that's where you put in your, your, your landscape strip and, and irrigation in accordance with the landscape code. So since Mr. Uh, Givens is changing his frontage from 18th to star, we are simply making that trade. Okay, you're not going to have street frontage on 18th anymore. He's not going to have an access point on 18th anymore. That has all transferred over to STAR. So that's why we're, we're requesting that same condition be, be applicable to his STAR frontage, which is 330 feet, not 120. Uh, the other thing, uh, Mr. Givens uh, it, has mentioned public works several times. Public works deals with off-site issues. Right. They do not deal with on-site issues. They don't deal with landscaping. They don't deal with site right. improvements. They deal with what happens in the public realm, the public right-of-way. Uh, this is a part of the city that we call the Y, uh, where there is a lesser standard, for lack of a better term, a lesser standard for street improvements. Out in this rural area, we don't require street lights. We don't require sidewalk curbing and gutters. We don't require other street improvements that you might see in, in the more uh, dense, uh, higher density parts of town. So all of those items were off the table anyway. The only thing we're asking the applicant to do is put in his 10-foot landscape strip along STAR. The city engineer has requested a 40-foot uh, turnout off of STAR into uh, his property and then uh, the road uh, the driveway the private driveway because that's what it is would be uh, improved to the parking lot to the venue and so forth uh, one of the main reasons or one of the main reasons for uh, the lot combination request is that that truly becomes a private driveway and not a private access easement which is a whole other ball of wax that requires council yeah. approval by requiring the, the, com the combination of the parcels, now he has an opportunity to put a sign not only along Star, but along Old West Highway. Mm -hmm. So you capture the traffic that's heading, the main traffic that's heading in a northeasterly and southwesterly direction. Uh, he can put a sign there saying, hey, turn left at Star, and he can also put a sign on Star. So it creates more opportunities for signage uh, just, you know, one, one other little tidbit, I guess staff could have required that the lands, that a landscape strip also be provided along Owens Highway. We're not doing that. We're <laughs> just asking him to provide his main landscape strip where his main entrance is going to be along Star. So those are, that's some of the reasoning for uh, the conditions as they are written, like we would require of any normal commercial development. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. Is, is this 300 feet only south of the driveway, or yes, is there the, also any footage north of the driveway? The driveway is basically... Is it right gonna, on the line? The, the driveway is going to be located uh, where the 20th Avenue alignment is, right. which is on the very north end okay. of that 330 okay. foot. Gotcha. So you'll see this nice landscape strip, gotcha. and then you'll turn left uh, onto the, uh, gotcha. the venue property. Yeah. I got you. Thank you. Uh, Rudy, in yes. our uh, requirements, it can be considered all drought tolerant. There wouldn't have Absolutely. to be irrigation type. Uh, it'll probably need irrigation to get established. Right. Uh, but, but yes, it would be natural desert plants uh, or plants that are naturalized to the desert. The Palo Verdes, the tamarisk, the, the shrubbery, the, the, the desert grasses, that kind of thing. Right. And... Mr. Chair, Commissioner. <laughs> Rudy, does it have to be trees? There is, a, there are a certain number of trees required. 24 inch box trees, that is a standard in the landscape code. Typically for every uh, 30 feet of lineal footage that you have, one tree is required. So it would be six, about six, uh, seven. Nine, nine or 10 trees. Okay. And shrubbery. Okay. Chair. Commissioner Cantwell. 
If I remember back to when we first handled this, I think part of the discussion about the um, uh, landscaping along 18th was to also help provide a buffer between this and the residential right. area immediately north. Yes, sir. In this case, we're dealing with a church on the east side. Yes. So, you know, that's a little bit of apples and oranges to me. Well, there's no business. The, there's, you know, uh, the, the need to there. isolate it is probably less important on the east side than it would have been on the north side. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Cross. Does the applicant have any intentions of down the road landscaping along his road? Split rail fence with <gasps> nice shrubbery along it to where it's more inviting than just a bare desert with creosote laying around. <laughs> right. I would assume yes. I don't have a, I don't have a plan in, in paper for that. Again, in all honesty, we'll defer to my wife on that um, as what it looks like when it's there uh, and kind of see what could be added. I know she's a very big fan of the, the swallow look, obviously. Um, and so she would certainly, I'm, would be considering that, I would imagine. Uh, but the answer is I do not know uh, down the road. I think it's something that once the road is there, could we put something up? And then, you know, how do we, how do we keep it alive? <laughs> okay. It's, and again, it's, it's very hidden from the property itself with that wash and the Where's dense your, number of trees there. Where's your current water meter? Uh, not yet established. So is the water gonna come in off of 18th? You have no idea if it's gonna come off of 18th or off of Star. If it comes off of Star, your water's already there. That's correct. Yeah, I, I do not know the answer to that question. Okay. Rudy, do we know where the water is out there? Uh, I, I don't know where the water is, sir. Do you know, Nick? That's Arizona Water Company. That's Arizona Water Company. They, they'd have to, have to coordinate to with them, yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, they only have two choices, either coming off of 18th, which would be, um, why would you put a water meter in on an unestablished road? You'd put it right here by the... Um, driveway entrance like where my water meter is for my house mm -hmm. so running you know you made it sound like you're gonna have to run water from your yep. building back across the wash over to your yellow line where th that would probably be unnecessary you should be able to just come off of your uh, right there by your meter put a box yes. in put your backflow preventer in and off you're running yep that's absolutely true I okay not experienced in that i just assumed it would have to come from the developed land portion gotcha. but if yeah if that's the truth then that certainly makes it easier chair uh, commissioner barker and so there are no sidewalk requirements there correct rudy yes ma'am we're just looking at a strip of of landscaping which correct. More than 120 feet. 120 feet, it made sense to me. With Maybe. 300 feet. I think you meant 120 yards. I may have misspoke. Yeah. Yep. I had no, okay. so many numbers in my 300 head. feet. It would work. Is it would yards, work. So. Exactly. Yes. Very yep. good. Thank you. I apologize. For um, but in looking at it from a, a purely aesthetic point of view, you have a, a, a venue that you're inviting people to have celebrations in. And it would seem to me that that landscape strip would make your venue look better than just the grasses. To me. I'm, I, so I can see the whole point now. Yeah. I, I got it. Thank you, Rudy. Rudy explained very well. Yeah. Thank you. Can I speak on that? I agree. It's more, what we've just learned as a novice in this process is that that very way that very well may be the case and likely is the case. Yeah. But we would prefer it not be required in case it's not the case. <laughs> so in case my wife has the vision of you're going to come through the desert, cross the wash into this oasis, kind of having the two worlds clash, coexist, well. if you will. I'm sometimes, speaking for my wife, which is very sometimes dangerous. Sometimes <laughs> you can't always get what you want. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, if you're going to quote songs, so I, can I. I, 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 <laughs> I'm married long enough, I know that is the truth. 
<laughs> we'll not argue. We're not asking you to make it a lush green no, grass. No, lawn. no, no. Yep. No. I, I, yep. No. Just Mr. inviting. Um, are there any plans for the development of that land south of the road? Any, no. Any ideas? Intentionally want it to be desert. Okay. That's the one thing I've, I have heard from my wife say. Doesn't because that, that triangle that is left there is, that's almost too small to put anything on, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of small. Yeah. I don't know. It's part of the, I believe it's part of the parcel on the other side of Old West Highway. The same owner, or I could be wrong, but it's fairly small, I believe. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? Any questions? Good. If, oh, are you going to say something? I'm sorry. Nope. Uh, at the conclusion of your decision, which we're completely fine abiding with whatever is made, could I bring up a secondary discussion based on your answer to our request to remove it? Does that make sense? If you say, mm, no, we're going to deny that request, we're keeping it in, can I then have another motion to give some options that we have thought about, but we don't want to present yet. We'd rather just it be removed. Does that make sense? Um, no. Yes and no. I'd say probably give those options now because then we'd have to go back through public discussion and everything. Okay. So if the motion to remove it is denied, could we have, <gasps> do you guys have the authority to make changes to it, meaning like Commissioner Barker was saying, trees would not be required for safety reasons for the side of view or just because we would rather keep it lower um, and b could we approve the types of plants be artificial if they are the na natural to because you can get anything artificial these days uh, if it's shrubbery only could we do artificial shrubbery uh, mr chair if i may if i yeah, sure yeah please I think uh, it's better to, uh, I, I think the applicant should probably provide alternatives now right. uh, instead of saying, well, can you do that? Well, I think you should say, well, if, if you don't go this way, then can you go this way? And that's probably a better way to proceed. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I, like, I, like I just said, yeah. if we can't remove it and you, we don't want it to require, can we have it required with no trees and or can we have it required not having to be real, but can it be artificial and maybe a condition of has to be approved it can't be well, obviously. Christmas trees you know? <laughs> uh, but something that looks real because there's a lot of things out there that really look real but when you touch it it doesn't cut you or it doesn't die right uh, I think those are the two main points Rudy would you have any problems with fake absolutely <laughs> uh -huh. They, I, I, I would I would they, have a they, problem with they fake. They fade and they Two. they get torn up. Uh, yeah. Fake plants don't do well in this sun at all. Yeah, I concur with yeah. Commissioner Barker. Yeah, I'd be more. Plas fine. Plastic isn't going to last you a season here. Uh -huh. <laughs> we could have fair. the condition where it has to be maintained though as well. So I mean, it, it would be a. Re you know, you you have it to may in the long run not be worth it to me, right? I, you'd you'd have to maintain it just like real landscaping as well. I mean, there's a it's a maintenance Absolutely. item. I, I think in the long run it would be cheaper to have put in 24-inch box trees and sh some five-gallon shrubs that will grow. As opposed to the fake. I as know, opposed to the fake. Because yeah. you're going to spend two or three hundred dollars a fake tree. And then replacing it would not. And be replacing it at the end of August. Yep. Especially if you go with desert plants, get them established, and then you don't have to water them in the long run. Fair. I got okay. a question. Scratch that from the records. <laughs> Mr. Oh. Mr. Chairman, in, in the uh, interest of compromise, um, we can, you, you can require that not all of the trees be 24. If we're talking about cost savings here, which I think is what we're doing, mm -hmm. Uh, maybe 20, half of them, half, five trees be 24 inch box, five trees be 15 gallon. The 15 gallon trees being cheaper. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we're talking cost savings, that might help a little bit. Mm -hmm. sure. I, th I think you, you, you're within your, definitely within your authority to do something like that. Chairman Cross. Yeah, uh, applicant, uh, um, 
Is this a financial issue or is this a maintenance issue? For Not you? financial at all. Okay. So mainly it was, it's a, uh, just a maintenance issue that you're worried about going forward. Um, and, 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 the, and, and the issue of, of water availability, et cetera, et cetera, which we've um, pretty much dispelled yeah. your water issue. Yeah, right. Water, maintenance, and then having a strip that feels out of place when we're not developing anything else around. Well, nothing else is around it developed, and we are not intending to develop anything else. It would just be there. But, so, you know, down the road, most likely, that will eventually be um, possibly something developed on it. And or, you know, currently, if I'm um, correct on this, Rudy, aren't uh, uh, desert um, Palo Verdes acceptable vegetation? Absolutely. Yes. So yes. you yes. could put the same type of trees that are growing in and around the area right. as that landscape, and it, you know, pretty much yeah. wouldn't know any different other than you would have something other than creosote bushes for your shrubbery. Okay. Yeah, and I need education on that because I just don't know. Are you referring to like this guy here? That's creosote, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, the, the, the smaller shrubs that you see there looks more like uh, burst age mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, brittle bush. Yep. So uh, brittle bush is not a, uh, you know, it's an option that grows, it grows on its own. But <laughs> like this time of year, it looks ratty and dead because it's yep. dormant waiting for the next yep. big rain. Yeah. So this could be, this would be an acceptable and, tree. And, and, and well, not, creosote doesn't get any bigger than that. It's not a tree, it's a bush. Would it be acceptable for the tree component? But you could use that as part of your landscape. Creosote okay. is a, 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 a landscape um, plant, drought to, obviously drought tolerant. Now these, what you see right here, those are Palo Verde. Okay. Regular run-of-the-mill Palo Verde that'll just, you know, once they're established after the first year, they'll pretty much grow on their own with never having to give them another drop of water. <laughs> and what about my concern, if you're looking from this, if I'm well, actually... You're, you're going to be 10 feet back from the edge of the road, so people pulling up to get out onto Star will have pretty much a 10-foot... You know, view. You can keep your trees at the yeah. ten foot line, and your bushes down lower, grasses, things like that. Got it. Where that arrow is at, yes, is about where you would be starting your landscaping. Got it. And it would be a single row. Right. You put at a that single ten foot line essentially. Put a single row out there, interspace a few trees with some bushes. I don't think I'd have a problem with that. But it won't be right up on the highway or on Star Road. Right. You have to maintain a clear vision. Right. Yes, yeah. right. Exactly. So, you know, your, your, your trees don't have to be right there at the corner and starting right at the corner of your driveway. They can be down just a little bit where they start. Okay. Plus, once they get up a little bit, you're going to trim the, the branches from the bottom parts of the trunk so it's more of a canopy. And once that's established... Then you shouldn't have it too much of an issue. That makes me feel much better. Yeah. They do make a thornless version, which I'd highly recommend, yeah. so okay. you don't get killed trimming them. Desert, <laughs> Desert Palo Verde, yeah. uh, Museum Palo well. Verde. Okay. And if you want something that's extraordinarily slow growing, ironwood. Yeah, okay. It'll be yeah, I'll have to educate myself on years. eventually. But. Mr. Chairman. That's great. Uh, uh, developers are highly encouraged to also salvage uh, usable trees that are already on site. Right. Mm -hmm. So there may be enough trees and shrubbery out there that's already there. Yeah. If they're going to need to take out plants oh, yeah. uh, for the purpose of putting in a parking lot and a building, right. uh, those plants, the, the healthier ones, of course, are certainly reusable and they could go on the landscape frontage exactly. and mm -hmm. solve that problem. Great point. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you go down here and look at the corner of Royal Palm and Superstition, yep. where they're clearing for all that, yeah, yeah. you can see all the trees that they boxed up and took off the land. Got it. And they're going to replant once they're done. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, can I get explained what the um, shall be planted within a minimum 10 foot feet deep strip inside the net property line? What exactly does that mean? Well, so it sounds like you guys were telling me to start we, we, 10 we feet. We have a graphic yeah. that shows the right of way uh, on your, in your presentation. Yeah. Can you please pull it up? <coughs> so. I know it, you know it, but... 
So as a brief explanation, so when we require a 10 foot landscape strip, it's not that every square foot within that 10 foot strip is filled out. It, what, it, what it just means is that the landscaping itself is within this 10 foot area, whether that typically because you have like a wall or a building at the end of that 10 feet, but the landscape strip itself is the allowance of landscaping within a 10 foot area. Not that the entire thing has to be filled out. So let me, uh, so on star prop on star, where does that 10 foot start? So, and that, that is a good point. Part of his question was, what does it mean to be 10 feet within the net land or, or net property boundaries? So along star, there is a, uh, I believe this is 33 feet of right of way. Yes. This is a city owned street. So, so the city actually owns this property. The actual property line starts where this yellow line is. So the landscaping itself is, is 10 feet within where this yellow line ends because that within the property itself is what that would mean to say. So this being the property line, <coughs> 10 feet back from there is where landscaping is required when we do commercial developments. And the property line is 33 feet back from the center of the road. That's correct. Okay, so the road is going, call it 10 feet wide. So you got 20 feet off the edge of the road before your property line starts. Roughly, right? <clears throat> Whatever. Well, yeah, it varies. And is star lined up correctly in the right. middle of the? Yeah, I, I don't know if the center line is exactly yeah. the center of star, but, but generally speaking, that's how it is aligned. So, so yes, uh, if this picture is any reference, so if we were to say that the hypothetically that the center line is exactly where it should be in the center of star, there would be about 33 feet. And that is the, the city right-of-way, the actual area that is, like, legally the street. And so then 10 feet back from there is where the trees would be. So 33 so. feet will go back to that mesquite tree in the left corner. Uh, that's about where I estimate it, yeah. Give you a better idea? Oh, right. okay. So it's not my yellow strip at all? No. no. It's a little no, bit it's, past it's your yellow strip. A little bit further back. Most likely. It. It, it would right be about in terms where of that ridge in would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Along the top of the ridge, first okay. And you could plant your trees really deep in that 10 feet yeah. if you wanted to, and you'd end up with a very large area between the street and Lines your trees. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Have your shrubs up closer down. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. In the city, they'll help you. Oh, yeah. No, they've been they've been great. Yeah. Okay, well I think then Yeah, I guess I don't I don't have anything else, although I would take Rudy's suggestion of half being fifteen gallon, half being just to make it smaller to just to have the option. Sure. Okay. I would I would request that, I guess. I wouldn't have a problem with him going with smaller trees. Yeah. That's good. Especially also Get what you can when you do your driveway. Yeah, right. I'm sure I have it <laughs> out there somewhere. Just pick up the small ones on your property that you're going to remove and put over there. No, no, this is maybe very helpful. I think it's going to, especially the water yeah. issue. If it's right there, then get them get them settled, and then I can Turn let them lift. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mayor, I got one thing. Yeah, Commissioner Gates. The combination of the lots that's going to have to be done before this is all. Approved and finalized. Yep. Part of the okay. And is that through the city or the county? Through us. Yeah. Through the city. Yeah. Through the city. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was told that last year. In order to put a sign up anywhere on this property, it had to be part of the actual developed property. <coughs> yeah, we already combined. One can't be off-site. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we will certainly be doing that. Thanks. Anybody else? All right. Thank you. All right. Then anybody from the public wish to speak so now? Anybody from the public? I'm going to close the public. Um, so I don't, have any, I don't have anything else yeah. to say. Well, we we agree to change mm -hmm. the language on the trees to half and half. Yeah. Well, 
before we get into the finding of facts. Yeah. Half and half, Mr. Chair. Yeah. If we yeah. all agree, I, I think we I can think agree that to works. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, on number five, Mr. Chairman, it would be the, the language, except where it says 24 inch box, you would say half 15 gallon, half 24 inch box. Yeah. That's literally it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. The city doesn't have an issue with that at all. No, sir. All right. I gotta get to my next page. Here we go. You gonna do the finding effect there? Oh, then you want me to? If you want to. <laughs> yeah, we're used to you doing it, so. <laughs> right? Yeah. I gotta get to the next page. What page is that on? Let me find it. There we go. There you go. It's in, we got to go to this one, I believe. So we got to do it under 55, right? Is that? Are you in 55? LP 21. So we got to do finding a fact under 55, right? It's 51. Yep. The new one. Nick, is that in the report? Is that in your motion? Or your, is that in your it, packet? It's in the resolution. Uh, if you just want to uh, uh, quote from page of two of the resolution. Page two of the resolution. Can you follow it up on the screen? We'll just read it from there. Yeah, that would be easier. Oh, okay. Right. <clears throat> I believe I have it right now. Yeah. There's so much in the. I thought uh, it was in the staff report. In, in the staff, in the. Uh, having technical issues. <coughs> Should be this part right here. So starting off with A, the site has adequate roadways, off-street parking, public facilities, and services to accommodate the proposed use. Yep. Everybody in agreement? B, negative impacts are not expected from the emission of odor, dust, gas, noise, lighting, vibration, smoke, heat, or glare. Anybody good? Yep. C, the use will not contribute to the deterioration of the neighborhood or have a negative impact on neighborhood property values. Good and curve. The use is compatible with surrounding uses and structures. Yep. Agreed. 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 Yep. The use conforms with the general plan and city policies. Agrees. Agreed. Yes. F. The site provides for adequate screening and buffering of uses and? Yes. 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 G, there is not a unique nature to the property, use and or development's physical characteristics. Agreed. Agreed. Sure. <laughs> you, you don't to have to read all of it. I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission approve resolution P-22-55 
the conditional use permit amendment case requested by Mark Russell Givens of Becoming One Properties LLC to modify resolution P-21-61-CUP, 21 replacing the former conditions of approval with those conditions that are recommended in the staff report of July 12, 2022, with the exception of number five, which should be amended to have all required trees being one half 24 inch box and one half 15 gallons. I have a motion, do I have second. a second? Second. second. I'm sorry, who was the second? Mr. Cantwell. Commissioner Cross. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Barker. Yes. Commissioner Begaman. Yes. Commissioner Cantwell. Yes. Chairman Hanchi. Yes. The motion passes, Mr. Chairman. The CUP is approved. We look forward to working with the applicant on the completion of their plans. Thank you. All right. We don't have any old business. No, sir. Do we have any new business? Not today, Mr. Chairman. Um, do we have the chair doesn't have any information? Do you have any new information? Yes, sir. Joel, you got any information for us? <laughs> no. <laughs> any uh, commissioners have anything they would like to put out there? He's speaking regarding ballots or what? Is he allowed to? Uh, no. Okay, I didn't think so. Okay. That's why I asked for legal precedent there. I've got a question, Thank I guess. You. I've heard through the grapevine that there's an effort to do an uh, infrastructure utility planning in the Grand Hotel area. And the sewer district's been asked to participate in that with the city and a developer over there. There are, there are a couple that? of... Uh, no. So yeah. if you were asking to put it on a future agenda, yes. But you cannot talk about that item because it's not on the agenda. Okay. So if you're asking to put it on the agenda, we can do that. Okay. I'd, I'd like to hear about it. Okay. We will have it on your next agenda. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Infrastructure, sewer improvements in the old Rand Hotel site. Yeah. There, okay. it, it was on our agenda at the, at the last sewer board meeting. I was just wondering what, what you okay. guys are doing with it. We will schedule that. All right. All right. Then uh, selection, meeting dates, times, location of the next meeting. M Mr. Oh, sorry, Mr. Oh. Chairman. Uh, you forgot item number nine, director's yeah, report. Just sure. very briefly, Mr. Chairman, I wanted to mention that the RFP for the zoning ordinance update is out. We should have uh, some uh, applications in here in the next couple of weeks, next two or three weeks or so. <laughs> Uh, and then staff uh, will work together with uh, some other folks here in the city uh, to pick a consultant so we can get started on our, on our zoning ordinance update. And that's going to keep us busy for uh, the next several months, like the general plan update did and the uh, update that we did before that. Uh, that is the main, uh, one of the main items that's going on development services right now. <clears throat> and, and just very, very briefly, Mr. Chairman. There's a lady sitting in the back of the room. That's my wife. Today we are 36 years married, and I just wow. wanted to. You know who she was? Congratulations! <laughs> and uh, her name is Rosie. And that's all. That's all I have to say, Mr. Chairman. A terrible way to have to spend your <laughs> I am so sorry. We need to get her a medal. Yeah. <laughs> I think she needs to take him behind the woodshed and teach him where he's supposed to take her for a date. <laughs> We're going to dinner afterwards. Okay. I got lucky and they canceled the meeting on my anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's get you out of here. <laughs> um, selection of meeting dates, times, and location. Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Barker. I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission hold a regular meeting on July 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the City Council Chambers located at 300 East Superstition Boulevard. And in the event there are no items to be brought forward to the Commission, these meetings may be canceled. 
notification of cancellation properly posted and the commission notified by staff. Second. Second. I have a second. Uh, roll call reading. Commissioner Cross. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. Commissioner Barker. Yes. Commissioner Begaman. Yes. Commissioner Cantwell. Yes. Chairman Hanchi. Yes. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>